Hey everybody, uh, welcome into the podcast. This is In the Closet with Jeff and Angela. You didn't even give me a heads up that we were getting ready to go and I was well, sitting here talking to myself. Sometimes I like the surprise attack, you know what I mean? I Come with so. the old surprise attack. I guess so. So I kicked it off very formally. Very formally. Oh, son of a biscuit. What? My drink. Your drink? Where my drink at? My drink's out well, there. Well, get it. I can keep. I can. You hold sure this you can down. handle this? Yeah, for a we're minute? gonna talk about relationships today, and I can kind of. Oh get the yeah, started. that's what I'm talking about. For some reason, people like when we talk about relationships a lot. So you know, being that we've been in one for quite a while, we like to talk about relationships as well. Today, specifically, we're going to talk about. I don't think we're going to get through all eleven. Okay. We'll probably have to do this in multiple podcasts, but it's 11 conversations that have the potential to save a relationship, okay? Because when a relationship seems to be failing, it's usually because of some sort of lack of communication. Communication is key. We say it all the time. When people ask us the question, what do you think is the most important thing about holding a relationship together, keeping a relationship together. Jeff and I, I'll ask him when he gets back here, but we almost always say communication. You have to talk to each other. The other person is not a mind reader. I can't read what's going on in Jeff's head. He can't read what's going on in my head. And it's not fair for us to think that they should be able to know. You should just know. We say that all the time. So that is uh, the one thing I think is a must when it comes to relationships. So I'm going to ask Jeff. We'll see when he says the same thing. I'm back. What is the key? When, when people ask us, what is the key to keeping a relationship together? Uh, frequent lovemaking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, while that is on the list of 11 things. Just I, kidding. I, and I said we were not going to get through all 11. But what do you usually say? Um... The key, the keys, like, like what, what, are, like for both of us. No, when somebody just asks you, hey Jeff, in your opinion, what is, what is, what's the, what's the secret of keeping a relationship together? Being friends. Being friends. Okay. Being friends and and having um, what what what's the word that we talked about it earlier? It's um. Oh gosh, what's the word? I don't know. It's it's empathy. Oh, okay. In a way, like you, you can, you can actually, you're not selfish. You have to be kind of giving, and you have to understand. You have to give, give people but, their feelings. But what's the basis behind all of that? Uh, you have to be in love. Uh, okay. <laughs> Obviously, you can tell we did not, we did not set this up at all. No, I'm struggling. I just went up the stairs, and you hung that. that, that oh yeah, that's very taxing. Exhaust, that's very exhaust taxing. your brain. I was just saying, when it communicate, okay. When Communication. It communi- I'm saying communication okay. is probably the key to okay. a relationship. <laughs> yeah. I, I started that sentence out wrong. When a relationship seems to be failing, it's usually because of a lack of communication. Big Because time. people, and I was just saying how people think the other partner, you know, we, we're not mind readers, right? We're not mind readers. And the other thing is, is not only are we not mind readers, and I, I can't even finish my thought because you can't start it that way, Jeff. Let me start over here. I think as people, we're so egocentric as humans, as people, to, to not even knowing we are, that we assume that the person we're with is like-minded mm-hmm. or maybe thinks the same way about everything. That's true. Because you know what a lot of us do, and I did this when I was younger? You don't really give them a chance to really express how they feel about something. So if I am really strongly feel like you shouldn't have guy friends, I'm not going to ask you about your opinion on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just be always heated about it when the topic comes up. Right. And it it, it kind of stays, I stay offensive on everything. So you can't ever go, you don't ever feel comfortable giving your real opinion. That's that's, that's deadly. Right. That's bad for relationships. And and communication would fix that. Here's the whole, there's 11 conversations that you can have that could potentially save your relationship. That's what this article is about. I found this article online. I like online. it. I like it. I, I, we, we are not going to get through all 11. I know we won't. So this will have to be a multiple. Uh, Orgasm. Po- like that helps a relationship <laughs> as well. Um, multiple podcasts. I don't know how many we'll get through today, but there are several um, Wait, are we doing a series? Are we doing a series? Well, I'm just, I am I mean, I don't know. Cool. Okay. There are several conversations that have a potential to save a relationship. 
Um, sometimes they're, these these eleven are kind of hard to talk about, yeah. but they are definitely um, game changers. If you so, can we're talk not going to talk about these though on the podcast. We're just going to talk about what they are. What? What? I got nervous. Something difficult no, we got to talk I'm about. Insane. We're not going to do that for us right here, are we? Or not we? unless we just get into it. Okay, cool. Let's do okay, this. Okay, well, let's just start right into it. The first one is intimacy. Okay, and again, I'm getting this article off of, of the internet from, from Bustle, is what it is, if you want to look it up. Okay, so I'm basically reading from that. Um, issues with sex can mm -hmm. create big divides between couples, whether it's about lack of desire or not getting their needs fulfilled. Physical right. attraction and intimacy wane over time with the relationship. And it does. And we know that for a fact. You know, we've been together since 1991. So, yes, our intimacy, intimacy levels have been all over the map. All over the and map. And it doesn't necessarily mean we're not attracted to the other person if our intimacy level is low. It just means mm -hmm. that we've been together for a long time and life happens. Well, you're going through different phases of life with the person. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's not at the top of the list. It could be stressful times. It could be pregnancies it can right. be children you know it just there's just different there's ebbs and flows to right a long long life of a relationship if it's going to be a long relationship right and that's that's why communication and being open with the other person is key now here is where at the beginning of this podcast i i kind of said you know you have to talk about things you can't expect me to read your mind about what you need and i can't expect you and i can't sit here and say well you should just know what i need you know, right. that would be nice. I've and, said and, that. Well, I've said it too. Yeah. You know, I don't want to tell you what I need. I just want you to know. Here's the thing. When we, and I don't know, I don't want to jump ahead. Hold on. I didn't even look through all of these. Do not jump ahead. Well, I, I don't want to get into something and then, anyway, um, there was a time in our life when after, you know, I had, uh, let's see, it was probably after I had Brooke, that we had an intimacy issue and it was my, it was a me issue. Um, I had had the two kids kind of not back to back, but close enough together where my body was wrecked, right? So I did not feel good about myself. I didn't like looking in the mirror. I didn't like getting dressed. I felt disgusting because I was overweight. I had had these babies, so my belly was like gushy. Gushy. Can I say gushy? Gushy. Say gushy. Gushy. It was gushy. And I didn't like what I saw in the mirror. So, therefore, I felt that that translated over, just like you said a minute ago, how I feel you must feel, uh, thinking that he probably felt the same way, and why would he want anything to do with me? Well, even when he would, you know, come on to me like he did want something to do with me, I felt disgusting, and I was very self-conscious. Very self-conscious. And a lot of times, I pushed him away, which led to discussions of, like, why are you pushing me away? Like, what's the big deal? What do you have going on? You know, you get to eat. So, Jeff, you know. He got in his head a little bit about why are you not wanting to be intimate? Because, and, here, and here's the thing, I could have just told him straight up, this is what's going on with me, but I had a little bit of pride. I didn't want to admit that I was weak. I didn't want to admit that I had low self-esteem. I didn't want to admit that I felt bad about myself. So for the longest time, I kept my mouth shut. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just busy with the kids. You know, I just threw it off on the kids. I'm busy. I'm tired. Okay. When all the while... So that led him to feel like, oh, she wants intimacy as much as I do, but she just doesn't want it with me. So you, he put that in his head. We had many, many fights of, uh, you're not wanting to do this with me, so where are you getting it? Because you must need it. You must want it. Well, at that time, my hormones as, as well were out of whack, and I didn't need intimacy as much as right. Jeff did. So it put, because I wouldn't sit down and be honest with him because I had pride and I was embarrassed that I didn't want to admit that I was having some self-esteem issues, it made him sit around and wonder where I'm, where I was getting it from, which was nowhere. And I was fine with that at that time, right? And it wasn't mm -hmm. until later in life when I started talking about that and I started opening up about, you know, my fitness journey and I started getting comfortable and talking with how I, bad I felt about myself, I was able to tell him the real reason. And he was like, oh, oh, okay. Like he understood. Why would I not just stop at that time and sit down and communicate? with you i was i was younger but but again yeah. it was pride so see you were younger you 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 were younger and you mature i'm a man so i never get that i still to this day you you like why didn't you just tell me that's what you meant or that's what you were thinking i'm like oh i just didn't want to tell you 
Right. Talk well, no, about. I mean, you told me. You, you said. No, no, I'm saying in other areas, just other things in general. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, I got, I'm, I got off track. No, 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 it's fine. But intimacy is important. And, and if, you, if you take steps to keep it alive in your relationship with no, no matter how long you've been together, there is no reason why it can't stay alive for many, many years, right? But you have to discuss things up front. So you, if there's an issue with your intimacy, you both can like work towards a solution, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, and I think too, I think the problem, the biggest problem I see, of course, we've been together for 29 years and I'm not talking about us. Of course, we've had our ups and downs with intimacy and other things. But what, what I see and I think we all could experience if we let it in is the people get people. I have someone in my life that's a buddy who said that he said, "Man, I just he's in his he's in his late thirties now. He's like, as soon as that honeymoon phase is over, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm out because that you for that fun first year year to two years, the intimacy's it's easy, right? And that's why I was easy. just sitting here thinking, people that are are newlyweds or haven't gotten married yet or just gotten you might be thinking, oh, if you lose intimacy, you're done. No, you could hang on." Because when you've been with somebody for 29 years, you don't necessarily, I feel like, lose... It's not that it's lost. It's, it's not just... that it's lost. It's just that it, it it kind of gets pushed to the side sometimes. Like this podcast did for the last couple of months because there's other things going on and it was not a priority. Not that you're not right. a priority or I'm not a priority, but, but it's like we're in this life together. Mm-hmm. And then, then on the other hand, it's so easy for people just to start. I think that's the biggest problem with... with uh, with our human nature and with relationships is one nobody said you know the expectations when you get married I was fortunate enough to be told it I didn't believe it at the time that your relationship is going to be hard I've said it a million times on the podcast your marriage is going to be hard you're both going to have reasons to leave you're going to fight you're going to hate each other's every but you have to fight through it you're committing right. to this forever I'm not saying that not being together forever is wrong. I think if, if if things don't work, they don't work. Right. You know, move on. Right. But I think a lot of times some people just give up right. too easily. You know why? Because it's easier to start fresh in a new job. Right. It's easier to start fresh with someone that's real easy because it's fun and it's flirty. Yeah, but then that's going to be... The, but you're, you're, give your honeymoon phase is going to end if whatever yours mm-hmm. is. But usually, I mean, the psychologists say it's a good two years at least. Mm-hmm. Could be long. Could be up to three or four of... You overlooking a lot of flaws, you making excuses for a lot of things that you will not normally put up with Mm -hmm. five years down the year, seven years down down the road. You're not going to put up as much with those flaws and those things that it's easy up front because you're 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 also learning new stuff. You're smelling new smells. You're feeling new things. It's a different world. Right, and I mean, then you put, you know you throw kids into the mix, you throw buying a house into the mix, you throw having ex wives, ex husbands. Yeah, you throw all of that into the mix, and it and it's going to take away from that. But if you sit down and communicate with the other person and work towards fixing whatever problem it may be with your intimacy, and it just might be the lack of it. You know, the the dude may come to you and say, "I don't know what's going on, but I feel like there's a lack in our intimacy." Okay, hopefully the other person will be mature enough to be like, okay, give me examples. Like, what do you tell? And it might turn into a little fight, and that's okay. Because sometimes yeah. when bring somebody brings something negative to you to the table, you get defensive. That's our nature. Well, and I did that to you. I, we've done it to each other, but I did that to you about the bedroom before since we've been open right. about talking. And, like, and instead of letting myself go however long, it's not that things weren't happening in the bedroom. It just was it just had gotten different right. in a way because you're distracted, but, and it's totally understandable. But it, it, like for me, I was going bonkers, right? In my head, right? Making stuff up, going through stuff. And that's what you do. And so instead of continuing to do that and building this little bit of edge towards you for me, I came to you, I said something, you got pissed. Um, we had a little, but you, like, as soon, that's the one good thing about you is you, you're not. You're not a person that holds grudges or continues. We had the little we had the little conversation. You explained yourself. I explained myself. And then you took steps, and we both took steps to do things to make that area more comfortable for us. Right. And it's like you just get off track sometimes. Right, but and we that's talked about partner. it. That's the whole thing. I talked about it before. Now, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have. Right. I would have picked fights with you. I would have thrown a fit. I would have got mad. I would have accused you of something. Right. 
think it's fair to let all that out. I think people think you've been together 29 years. You just got to be perfect. You got and well, it's, it's not, not perfect. And, and this and in this article too, on the last sentence of this uh, intimacy um, section, it says, "If you do not communicate about your intimacy issues, it's the classic reason people give for pursuing an affair." So you have to talk about your needs with your other person. And intimacy is hard to talk about, you know, because you don't want that person to feel bad about themselves. You, you know don't want I mean? them to feel inadequate or bad about right. themselves. And, right. and But you do have to talk because, like you said, and that's the thing, I think, I think our generation, I think it's not that way as much now, but the way we were brought up in kind of a religious back, it's like sex was not a big deal. You shouldn't be interested in right. sex. Well, it, everybody's pretending like it's not a big deal. It is. It's huge. Right. Right? And int- intimacy is as well. If you don't have those two things in your relationship, which they could be one and the same, but there's a different type of intimacy you need. Right. You need that emotional. But I think if you're missing that, we're like animals. You're going to go find... You know what I'm saying? Right. And when I say missing it, I'm not saying, hey, people, if it's not, if you're only getting action once a week, then you're not getting, and I'm not saying there's not maybe a phase, like when when you, when we had babies, and it might be a lot less than you're used to, but that's, you get, like you said, you got to talk about it. But if you just cut that out and you go, you shouldn't bug me for sex, you know, then it's not going to end well. Right. And I think, too, and we've said this before when we've talked about relationships on this podcast, um, it's very important, I feel like, for you to, as a couple, to get out of town every once in a while. Yes. Because the connection level when you're out of town is so much more. You know, you take your kids out of the equation. You take your work out of the equation. You take your housework, your laundry. You take the TV. Everything is out of the equation, and you're in a car, usually. You know, with your significant other, you're listening to music, you're driving down the road, you're stopping for food, you know, you're going out to restaurants, you're hanging out, just the two of you, and you get back to kind of like the dating feel, and you can right. kind of connect, and a lot of times, you'll start communicating, you'll start talking. It's like, you, you're like, oh, hey, where have you been for the past two months? Because we've been in our life, busy, you know? Yeah, it's these, it's our, our environment that we're in every day, that's what, when we talked about it. It's it's so important to get away right. and do something different because when you're walking into this house, even if you get rid of the kids, you have that invisible weight of life on, right? Mm-hmm. It, it like is around your neck when you're. It's just it's just well, yeah. you, you have constant responsibilities, and when you get away from those responsibilities, mm-hmm. you get to leave that weight here with them, right? And you don't have to think about. It. Now you might think about this. I needed to take care of this. I need yeah. to take care of that, but. It's not the same. But you don't walk in and you don't see, you know, the dogs and the laundry over here. And, oh, I forgot to do the dishes last night. And, oh, my gosh, why is the floor a mess? No, I need to sweep. I need to mop. I need to do this. I need to do that. You know, and, you, and it, all that aside, you just have a routine in the evenings. Right. You know? And you break that routine. Yeah. And now so it's, it's just nice. the two of us. And Right. So, I mean, I know it's not, like, financially um, feasible for a lot of people to do, like, every three months or something. But, but man, a couple of times a year at least. I mean, we like to shoot for, like... Um, every three months just getting out of town for the weekend, even if we don't go far, even if we just go a couple of hours away, even if it's just overnight. Yeah, we might run to Columbus for a night and come back. So um, I just think it's really important, and I I feel when we haven't done that, it starts to add up like right now, which we're going out of town next weekend. So, But like I'm itching for that because it's been a minute since you and I have been out of town by ourselves. It's been, been since before, right before we got shut down for the Rona. We went to... Well, it was we got Wait, shut down that we next week. We went to Louisville. Louisville, and we went it was to, shut down there. Well, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Well, it wasn't shut down, it but it was, it was getting, getting there. it was getting there. It wasn't quickly. shut down quite yet, but uh, that was the last time. So that was like what March that we've been out of town together. So that's yeah. been three. We should, we would have been probably two more trips since then. You know what I mean? So yeah. anyway, we are going out of town next weekend to Columbus. It's going to be fun. I mean, we are meeting some friends there, but still, it's still getting away and it's connecting. It doesn't matter. Way, so it's very important. I feel like for your intimacy level, it actually. And also, there's nothing like hotel sex. No. Hotel sex is cool. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to worry about anything. It's neat. It is actually neat. You're in a different place. It's fun. Yeah. So, there's that. Intimacy. And I I think intimacy, you know, and I haven't read through all this article, and I don't know if it's going to pop up, but, um, no, it's okay. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But I think that intimacy doesn't necessarily have to do with 
with just sex, I don't think. No, no, I think no, intimacy no, no. can come on along like on a um on, on a different level that's not a sexual at all. I think we've had some of our most intimate moments they haven't been sexual, especially lately. We've had some really good, you know, through all this being stuck at home and mm-hmm. just not having anything but music on sometimes talking and connecting. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be dramatic. It's just I feel I feel a connection. You know, you don't feel that well, connection with anybody else. Right. And we have I mean, we we have a thing in the mornings, most mornings. Some mornings are hectic and we don't get around to it, but you know, I set the alarm early just so we can do this. Like the alarm will go off, I'll get Nate the one for school, come back to bed, and we have some sort of like little cuddle time and some of you may be rolling your eyes like, Oh my gosh. But yeah. Like it isn't in in, in most of the time it doesn't lead to anything sexual because it's no. usually a work day and it's you know, sometimes morning. it does. It just depends. Yeah, but most of the time it doesn't, especially now with the school starting. But just like 15 minutes or, or one snooze, okay, nine, eight, nine minutes of just cuddling and connecting, that's intimacy. It's, yeah, it's it's very intimate for it, me. It and it's a lot of, it's that physical connection without any words. Right. That is so big. And I, I when I don't get it in the mornings, it messes it up my different. flow and my tone for right. the morning. And I think intimacy, too, can be the spontaneity of a touch. Just a simple little touch. I mean, yeah, it could be a slap on the butt, but it also could just be when, you know, you're sitting at the kitchen table and then your your partner walks by and just rubs their hand across your back as they walk by. That's yeah, when you did that earlier, that's, it it's makes you go, It's just a form of intimacy. Ah, like, okay, you still see yeah, that I'm here. Yeah. And like, you know, you know, holding your holding hands in the car or just things like that. It doesn't always have to be sexual to be intimate. You know? It's just easy when you're with somebody to let those things. So you have to be cognizant. And that's what, what I started to talk about earlier is relationships are hard. They're work. Right. After you get through that fun stage, they're work. You've got to, you've got to, I shouldn't have to get her flowers. I shouldn't have to. Well, and she might even tell you, don't give me flowers, but don't listen to her. I right. mean, you've got to make effort and whatever you got to do if you got to set the freaking alarm if you've got to i mean it's easy to get in a routine and not do spec make it make the person that is the most special you feel special right and i think we've talked about this before too and i'll touch on it real quick because it does relate to this i think guys and girls have the same issue but they're different issues at the same time okay i think guys are a lot of okay and I don't mean this to be disrespectful or not. I'm just talking. Guys are, like, sexually driven. And I right. think women are more emotionally driven. Do we like sex? Yes. Are you emotional? Are men emotional creatures? Yes. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying, do something that's outside of your comfort zone for the other person. Okay? So, what do I mean? Ladies. Okay? I've said it before. Buy something special to wear. Do mm-hmm. something that's not just, like, your norm when it comes to fun time you know what i'm saying something that's out of the ordinary so he feels like okay she's thinking about me she knows i like this stuff Mm -hmm. this might be a little bit uncomfortable for her but she's willing to put that aside to do this for me to make me feel this way right and in turn um i think men should try every once in a while i'm not saying be crazy every single night i'm just saying every once in a while go outside of your comfort zone and Leave her a little note. And Jeff's done this. Leave her a little note on her steering wheel when she doesn't expect it. You know, you know where her makeup drawer is. Write her a little note that says, you don't even need this. You look beautiful. Just for something, she'll open it. She's still going to put the makeup on. Okay? She's yeah. still going to put the makeup on. Don't worry, but, guys. But, but, I mean, she'll she'll be like, oh, that's so sweet, yeah. you know? Yeah. Little things like that go a long that's way. What like I was, thinking yeah, that's outside what I'm of your comfort zone. And then... Once you start doing that and you you see how it affects the other person, you're going to want to do it more and do you it do. more and do it more. Absolutely. So then you might prevent yourself from falling into this rut and into these dry times that we all have in intimacy. It's impossible not to have them. Right. And then if you don't talk about it, you build up resentment and then it just goes downhill from there. So I think it's very, very important. This whole this whole topic started on communication and I just think it's very important. I love it because you know? it's everything. If that's when you refuse to communicate, your well, feelings or accept the feelings of others, right, and validate them, right. You're 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 killing. You're cho- you're you're literally have your your marriage or your relationship in a chokehold, and the air is running out. Right. It, it's just 
the bottom line. I feel like that that so many times we said this at the beginning that you you feel like you want the other partner just your partner just to do it naturally. Like you you know I've had to come to you before and say I just feel like we haven't emotionally connected, or you've come to me and said I feel like we just haven't physically connected. Right? You don't want to have to do that. You don't. I, I sit here. It's like I wish I didn't have to go to Jeff and tell him he needs to be more emotional with me, or vice versa. Right. It doesn't make us a bad person because we're not meeting your needs on that level because we have stuff going on inside of us. You, right. you have stresses at work. I have stresses at work that we don't always share about, but that's why you got to communicate. So because have, sometimes it's not natural, and right. when you come and tell me, I go, "Oh shit, man, why right. am I not paying more attention?" Exactly. Because I want to give that to you, and I get I get something out of it. Right. It's just like sex. If if you're not in the mood. Right. Almost every time, I would say, you don't complain when it's over. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. No, it's true. But it's like you had a lot of shit going on, so you right. weren't thinking about it. Right. You've come to me before and said, I feel like it's been, like, week, you know, week or days since we've been physical. And I'm like, nah, uh whatever. And you're like, yeah, like, uh, and you told me the last time, and I was like, oh, my gosh, that was almost week. But life happens, and it's just like, I just haven't, like, I've just been consumed with X, right. Y, and Z, and we talk about it, and then we fix it normally, you know? Right, yes. So, I think it's very important. Even if you have to put things in your phone, you know, Jeff puts things in his phone, I put things in my phone, it doesn't mean it's bad, it just means that, to me, it means that you care enough to want to meet my need. That you want to make sure you right. don't forget that, you're that taking you want to make sure. And that, it's just the freaking games that you have to throw out when you hit about 20, yeah. 5. Right. These stupid games of... You don't love me as much as if you have to. You used to love me so much more because you didn't have to set notes back in the day. You used to, yeah, I know. Yeah, but you didn't have four freaking. You used to bang me seven days a week (laughs) and scream my name. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's. It goes both. Everybody can point their finger. (coughs) Everybody has to work on their part. Nobody's perfect. No, and it's such a. It's just such. Such a long play. You know, with the with the relationship, you've really got to be right. always working on it and, and working on yourself. And I think the way we're designed in every area is things are supposed to get easier for me. Right. right? Things are supposed to get easier for me. I'm not supposed to work as hard. I'm not supposed to have to work as hard at something that, you know, yeah. well, we've been together. We're together. I've got her. It's good. We're yeah, good. I got her. Good. She's got me. Everything should be easy from here on out. I shouldn't have to do that stuff anymore, right? You do even more because you have that's to what even she more. fell in love with. That's what right. he fell in love with. He, he, she, we fell in love with that. So if that goes away, yeah, I mean that should make you want to work even harder to keep things like they were in the beginning, right? Right. I mean it's not going to be easy because you have kids, you have dogs, you have jobs, you have stress, you have bills. We all have that. I agree. But you have to take care of why you first fell in love in, in the first place. Like, think about that. What made you fall in love with this person in the first place? Go back to that. Whatever it takes, both of you, you know, both people. Right. All right, well, let's talk about number two, and then we'll we'll talk, we'll talk come back on another podcast and go on, because this one, no, right. I think it's long. Okay, it's relationship boundaries. This article says, it is important to talk about the boundaries each of you have in the relationship so you can be clear about what would make each of you feel unsafe, disrespected, or disinterested. Ooh. Disinterested. Um, to start the conversation, ask your partner, are there things I might do that would make you want to end the relationship? This might be a hard question to answer, as many of us uh, don't have experience checking in on the boundaries until they're already upset, right? Until it's already happened. True. And, and one line has been crossed. Um, I think that's important. I think that is, would be a hard question to ask. I mean, that would be a weird for you and I to talk about right now because that's something that you should talk about in the beginning of your relationship. Like, what's the deal breaker for you? You know, what would I do? And I think what they're talking about, it says to feel unsafe, disrespected, or disinterested. Um, you know, some people might be offended because I know a lot of people have this issue. I have a safe word, so what? we're good there. <laughs> when it says disinterested, a lot of people, uh, and, and I can see this because I've said this to you before and you've said to me, but it's we're really at a, at a different level when it comes to this, but I'm thinking at the beginning of a relationship. Okay, so if you're on a date and you're, you're with somebody, it's like date two, three, well, maybe it's two months in. Maybe you're, yeah. And you're at dinner and the other, and you're talking and the other person's on their phone. To me, I know a lot of people who hate that. Who's like, hello, I'm here. Can't like, stand but it. But you yeah. have to talk about that up front and say, okay, we're new in this relationship. Let's me, let me tell you some things that like, and I want to hear from you too, things that like, would you be like, oh my gosh. Okay, so we're at dinner. I want your attention. Right. I want to be able to talk to you. 
or I might say, you know, I, I mean, I don't even know. I'm trying to think of an example for me. I don't like to be talked down to. Right. Period. Like, I don't like to be, or I don't like to be shushed. Like, don't get, shh. if I'm being loud to say, Angie, simmer down. Quiet yeah. down. Right. But don't shush me. I mean, things like that have to be talked about because they, if you talk down to me, I do feel, I feel disrespected and I hate it. Like, I feel like a kid and I, that is one of my biggest, like, things. You have things as well. But we, we know those of each other. We know those but, things, yeah. But, but we, I think we discovered those through trial and error of our relationships because I don't think when we first started dating we, dating, we were mature enough to be able to say, hey, let me just go ahead and get this out of the way. We weren't mature enough to do that. We had to learn as we went through. Right, and most people do. Most people do, but I do think that But if, this is a big help. If you're in a relationship and it's getting somewhat serious, these these type of things are good, like establishing the boundaries. Is, yeah, and, and even if you don't sit down and like, okay, here's the questions, here's my thing, let me give you an outline. As it arises, confront it first. It, the first time it happens, say, oh, okay. Can we talk about communication? Yes. Okay, so, you know, Je- you know, we're, we've just started dating and Jeff kind of talks down as a little bit condescending to me. I say, I'm sorry, um, what you just said right there made me feel like disrespected and I feel like you were talking down to me. Now, you might not feel that way, <coughs> but you have to have the other person let them have their feelings, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and, and absolutely. You, you may be so confused, and you may have to ask again, "What did I say? Now, what did I do?" And they, that, and you might think it's the stupidest thing ever, but communication, because if you don't tell the other person that, then you're that that's resentment peg number one. Then when they do it again, it's number two, and then all these little things are going to add up to where it's just like, "I can't stand this person. I can't stand this person." Right. But you never told them that you didn't like when they did that. Right. Okay. Can't read minds. No. So if if you don't like that, I pop my gum in the car or something that simple simple like okay i like that just really kind of gets on my nerves a little bit right okay well if i then you know what i mean like if you if i keep doing it and doing it you're gonna be like oh my gosh like i can't i yeah i'm i'm leaving you because of your gum chewing habits <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i mean like the very first time it happens you should confront it you should because it's not going to change i think a lot of people don't i don't think people do either and they build up these things that they think they can't bring it up because it shouldn't be a big deal, maybe. Right. Like, maybe the gum is. should be a big deal. Maybe it is. But I don't want to bring it up. I don't want to get in a fight with her over it. Right. And it doesn't mean the other person's going to... It might be something you can't fix. You might be able to say, Angie, I, I don't know that I talked down to you. I can't promise it's never going to happen again. But if it does, let me know, and we'll exactly. talk about it, you know? Or it might be a characteristic that you just can't change, and that's just who you are. You know, if, if it's like, Jeff, I don't like when you go out with your, your friends and you hang out with them because you act different when you come home. Well, you know you're going to not, ev- not not ever go out with your friends again. So that right. it might be a deal breaker. It may be. It may be. you got to figure that out up front. Right. I mean, best to know up front than to, like, be 10 years in and you put up with stuff until you just can't put up with stuff anymore. I think a lot of people do that. Oh, I think a ton of people I think do a that. Lot of people, I think a lot of people do that. And I think a lot of people get blindsided because, you know, they uh, they were used to something they were, that, that was okay in the beginning. You know right. what I mean? Like, I may go in the mar- marriage, and I might be the guy who's like, I'm going to really impress her. I'm going to wash the dishes every exactly. night. And I'm going to put them away, and it's going to, and so. But then that becomes expected. Right. So five years down the road, I'm like, why don't you do the do damn dishes every once in a while? Why do I got to do them every night? Right. You know what I mean? Right. You've taken out the trash in our home. I've never told you. Nine t- n- 9.8 times out of 10, you take the trash out. Right. And I and I expect that. So when it's full, I'm like, why has you not taken Because you always do it. So if all of a sudden you come downstairs and you're like, Angie, why, are, why is the trash not out? What, why are you not taking the trash out? I'm like, because you usually do. Well, I don't want to take the trash out. But you've taken it out for 29 years. Right. Or power, let me look. I know. It. You'll never take the trash out. It's driving me crazy. I've been mad about this for 20 Instead years. Instead of saying, I, do I have to take the <laughs> trash out every time, Angie? Could You, you like, should know. <laughs> right, that's the games people play. <laughs> you know, or if I just come, I mean, I pl- I played that game, so I can't say anything. If I come downstairs and say, Jeff, why is this, why is the laundry piled up? Why? I'd be like, what? Are you, I don't know. But I don't want to do the laundry anymore. Well, then you need to hire somebody, right? Because you expect me to do it. Because, but if I didn't like doing the laundry from the beginning of our relationship, I would have to sit you down and say, can we share laundry responsibilities? Exactly. Right. And then if I'm a dick, then you hold it against me. Then, then if I'm like, no. I'm not going to do laundry. it's probably a deal breaker because I am not that kind of girl who, and this, it, th- th- we're not going to get too much into this because I saw down the list and it says, one, we'll talk about responsibilities around uh, in the relationship later, but 
but yeah, I think it's just open and you just, you just kind of attack things as they come up in your relationship. And I think that's why it's important to have a long-term relationship before you jump right into marriage. And I know a lot of young people don't want to hear that. I know a lot of young people probably aren't listening. A lot of older people don't want to hear that. I understand that. That's probably true. But I think they, in the back of their mind, they know it's true. You need a good year or two before you jump into that big commitment because it takes a year or two to really find out how somebody fights. You got to go twelve rounds. You got to go. You got to say things that you pray pray to God and say, right. Let me take that back. Right. You've got to be in the doghouse. You've got to get into some. And I'm not saying you start those type of fights. No, but... But you're going to have them. That's why you... You need to have them. You need to see what your feelings are. Are you are you going to bed angry? Are you, are you, right. How do they react? How do you make up? There's, it's so important. It's, it's so very important. I'm not saying that if you rush into a relationship, it might not work. It, it might. I mean, I, no, I know there's might. relationships yeah, that are like, sure. what are you talking about? We knew each other for three months. We've been married for 25 years. That's amazing. That's great, but that's it rare. Is. You know, it's just rare. It's very it rare. It takes time to go through the good and the bad and the ugly. And just because you say wedding vows, you might have known each other for three months, got married, and said, well, we said wed- wedding vows, and it's 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 for better, for, for worse, for richer, for poorer. That's bull crap. You can say that all you want. you got to live through the battle. The you know? battle, yes. You've got to actually go through some stuff. You're, you're going to go through some battles, you some gotta big go battles. Through you're the gonna other go, person. You're going to be pissed off. Yep. You're going to be mad. You're going to be so freaking mad at that person at some point yeah and And not even just with fighting just like how does this person deal with uh trials in life you know does does this person get over anxious she does okay can i deal with that i get very anxious in life when when major things happen just like the past three weeks or so and and if you didn't know that i get in this type of way where i shut everything off you might not be able to deal with that for the rest of your life well and it might for some other men me knowing you and knowing how to deal with it, it they may, with you not being your normal self and being maybe irritable, it might create a lot of fights really easily. Right. Every day it could be like, why do, right. why, why, what's your problem? Right. Like, why don't you just suck it up? Or why don't you, what, what's going on? Like, you can't. It just takes a while to figure out what the other person needs. Yes, it does. So, anyway, that's my whole point. This has been a good one. This is only through I one love and these. two. This was yeah. intimacy and this was uh, setting boundaries setting in your boundaries. relationship. So, again, there are 11 conversations that you can have that might save your relationship. So we'll talk about the others in you the got two, upcoming So hang in there and, and don't days. don't split up until uh, until we get through these podcasts. <laughs> yeah, series. and again, we <laughs> didn't say kidding. this at the beginning, but we are not psychologists, we are not counselors, not. we are not therapists. We're just two people who have been together since we were fifteen and have been married for twenty two years. Two years, been together for twenty nine years. So it's just experiences. That's all we are. We're doctors of experience. That's right. So there we go. All right, well, I think that's it. All right, peace out.